how did I use markers with colored pencils to draw Johnny Depp's realistic portrait? So to start with, these are my materials. I have these markers. This was the first time I used them and this is their brand Copic. And the first thing I did was trying out their colors. And what I will show you today is three uses of markers with colored pencils. The first use is as the base. So this is the base layer. You can see that I am coloring Johnny Depp's face and neck with the lightest shade of these markers. And then after that, I'm going to add the midtones. For the midtones, I'm going to use one shade darker. This marker goes here. They're not everywhere, mostly the right side of the face because it's darker. The light is coming from left. And the darkest part is um, this dark brown that I'm going to use. It's mostly like burnt sienna, but really it doesn't matter because I'm going to go over it with my colored pencils. I'm doing these eyes also with this darkest shade because he has dark brown eyes and as the base and finally i'm adding the blackest part the darkest part with my marker if i did this with colored pencil instead it would have taken me forever this black part so what do i mean by base so if you use the markers as the base then it is easier to layer on them with your colored pencils without leaving any white spots because when the white of the paper shows, then it doesn't really look realistic. It doesn't look smooth. As you can see, it's very easy to layer because since marker is alcohol based, it doesn't fill up the tooth of the paper. That's why we have more space for the pigment of our colored pencils. This means I can do many layers without, you know, having any issues of layering. And don't worry if you go a little bit like dark in terms of midtones with your markers by mistake, because if it's the shadow area, we can always go over it with a colored pencil like white or buff titanium so that it looks one or two grades lighter. So you can do that for sure. But in order to make sure, I highly recommend you to try on a different piece of paper first do the markers first and then add the colored pencils on them and see what it looks like. Here on the lips, I did the same thing. I added this very, I would say peachy color on the lips. And afterwards I added all the pinks, reds, and even whites afterwards um, for the lips. And the mouth line, the where the two lips come together, it was the darkest area, of course. So I added some dark brown. The second use of markers here in my drawing uh, in realistic portraits is the blender. So in order to use it as a blender, what I did is I just laid down all the colors in the hair. I have raw umber, I have this, you know, ochre color and I have sepia. After I finish for the very first layer only, I'm going to go over them with my lightest shade of marker, almost white. It's like very, I would say like it's cream color. I go over them because he has brown, kind of blondish brown hair. And as you can see with the thinner part of my marker, it is easier to go over these and blend each other. Because it is alcohol based, it works perfectly on colored pencils because it works as a solvent. After I blend with a marker, I go over and do the second and third layers. I wouldn't apply the marker for the last layer because what I do is I add some, you know, flying hair or some additional hair with my X-Acto knife and it is hard to remove that layer with your X-Acto knife. In order to remove pigment, you need to have pigment <laughs> in the first place. So that's why it's important to use the marker only in the first layer. And the third use of the markers is just to do the simple solid colors, like just to color it without even any colored pencil on it. Not a base or not a glaze, but it is just as itself, such as right here in the black part of the hat. I didn't even go in with my colored pencils at all. I just used my black marker. I used the same black marker for the blackest part of the eye, the pupils, 
you don't see it here but I did and also the roots of the hair where the hair is coming out of that hat you can see that it's really dark there I did that with my marker as well so you can use markers just like that in three ways in three different ways in your realistic portraits I wanted to show you the hair one one more time I'm doing the exact same steps on the right side as well and now I'm going to blend them and you will see the difference That's amazing. It blew my mind how well it worked, honestly. And don't forget, if you're dealing with colored pencils, in order to erase, I think the best options you have are either electric eraser or your eraser pencil. Or pencil eraser. I don't know what you call it. Stick eraser. There you go. And for the hat, for the large areas, again, it saves you so much time to use marker as a base. For the hat, I use my marker and it was life-saving. This whole portrait took me nine and a half hours. If I hadn't used markers, I think it would have taken me at least 12 hours to complete this portrait. The hat was particularly challenging because there were so many different shades of gray and also purple. And I had the advantage because I was using waxed base Karandash luminance pencils, which are easier to burnish. Once you burnish, I feel like it's easier to finish larger areas. And that was my, I think, plus side in this portrait. Again, though, it took me a really, really long time to put all these shadows in the right place, with the right shade, with the right color. But because I formed the base with this marker, my job was much easier in terms of forming a nice warm shade for the hat. You can use different colors. I chose this beige color because I felt like it was a really nice base shade. But again, you could have used maybe light green here or you can use like light gray i didn't have those colors that's why i didn't use them but it's up to you you can have very different looking hat and maybe it would be easier if you if i used gray here honestly it's all what you have in your hand it just like depends on that and on the top of the hat you can see that i have two sections there is one area that i have a band and then that part is the lightest and then the top of the hat is a little bit darker so I did two layers there on top of each other so I didn't use the markers as the blender on the face or in the hat because I felt like it was more risky especially uh, on the face because I cannot erase the marker right but what I did, I used it as a blender in the darkest part of the neck, which I will show you in a second. And I also used, of course, the same way that I used in hair. I used it on a little bit of this part of the mustache and the beard. Now it's nicely coming along. And now you can see that I'm gonna go in to that neck area and blend these parts it was a little bit darker there that's why i felt more let's say confident to go in with my marker but again try on a different paper first and then go into your portrait this is it guys by the way i had used markers with colored pencils before to do some realistic cherries and it is much more different than portrait if you're interested in checking that out it's right here see you